Good morning and welcome back to Grandad's Art Space with Terry. Uh, bless you all this morning for joining me. Oh, it's a lovely day out there, sun shining. It's cold, there's snow on the ground, but it's it's a lovely day by the looks of it. Um, today we're going to attempt to do part three of painting a Scots Covenanter. Scots Covenanter from the 17th century. Um, they were from the lowlands of Scotland most of them. There were a few um, Highland clans involved with the Covenanters but most of them were on the most of the Highlanders were on Montrose's side with the, with the Royalists. But today we've, we're going to go back and have a look. We've done the, the main um, coat and breeches colour which is a, a, a grey um, my own type of grey which if you don't know about that, go and have a look at video one and that will tell you about the mixing. We've done his, his bag, his, um, we've done the the sword belt, um, we've done his breeches, we've done his the leggings, leggings just use any colours you want really. Gloves, gloves are the same colour as the the uh, buff coat, which in this instance was, let me just have a look, was a, I started off with a brown sand from Vallejo. So you can do the, the gloves the same colour. Right, okay. Now, um, I think we will be up to, what's the next thing we'll do? Okay, we've got the hair, the flesh, shirts, boots, the pikes, um, and the tie backs down on his the bottom of his breeches. Oh yes, and the, the actual swords, the handles, and the and they ain't got baskets on these. Uh, we'll get to those. Right then. I think we'll have a look at the flesh okay uh, now then let's just get it in its right order what's this one tan yellow no that's no good green brown no that's no good either what have I done with me oh here we are this one is Panzer Aces flesh base nice base colour to start with and then to you can move up from there. It's up to you what colours you use. But uh, I like this one. It's a nice, a nice sort of like orangey sort of colour. Right. Let me brush. Uh, put some flow improver in. As I've said to people before I don't use water to take the paints down I use a flow improver put a drop on there mix it up oh, that's a bit too runny oh dear no that's no good hold on I'll do it there it is Let's put another drop in That's better. Oh, sorry, that's my phone going off. Right then. Let's get his flesh going. You're probably wondering why I haven't got near the bonnets on any of these chaps yet and that's simple I paint them separate simply because I don't want blue 
over the faces. I'll just frame them up separately. Okay. Doesn't take long. I'm not looking for a, a professional quality finish. I'm looking for coverage. It all pulls together when we put the washes on and then go in afterwards with the highlights. And that's what pulls a figure together. Just putting the, the base coats down. As long as you're careful. Even all, all, even all beginner painters. This is the. This is the. Uh, the hardest part. Is learning to put all the base colours down. Especially if you've got. A. Uh, monotonous colour to keep doing all the time and then also do his legs if you haven't got if you're not using hose some I do some I don't I try to mix them up a bit it, uh, it helps to to break the pose up a bit So a lot of the, the plastic figures are the same. It's too expensive to do an entire unit in metal. Especially when you've got plastics on the market that you can afford to do a lot cheaper. As you all know. Right, okay. See, that didn't take long, did it? That's that one done. And do this one. When I'm doing it, I just make sure that I go right up onto the forehead to get underneath the body. Otherwise, you'll be left with a primer line. You don't want that. So I take it everybody's had a, a good week so far. Cracking on with your, your painting and I was going to say wargaming then, you can't really wargame can you at the moment, it's a bit difficult. At least there must be A load of armies being painted up. When when we do come out of this lockdown, people do start all gaming again. Those of you that do, it's going to be amazing to to see all these freshly painted, most ranked armies turning up to clubs have to uh, those of you who do war game you're going to have to uh, do a fair bit of filming so the rest of us can have a look and see what all these army new armies look like on the battlefield What's uh, 
Well, a lot of us are going to do when we come out of this. I've actually been wondering whether to start some sort of little cottage industry up. Whether to look at um, going in and painting, trying to make a little bit of money out of it to buy other figures and do others. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if anybody would be interested in buying my figures, quite honestly. I was actually thinking about. figures I've got, trying to sell them and then through my local church that I attend, trying to uh, use some of the money I raise to help with um, people in the community with food and stuff I don't think I'd be able to raid enough there. But every little helps I suppose no, I'll see no I want to uh, when we do come out fully this lockdown I want to start a, a group up, an actual physical group meeting, uh, uh, historical modelling, wargaming, painting group that can meet at my local church. That would be interesting to do because there's nothing around here like it. We don't have any modelling groups, there's no wargaming groups, there's no, the only painting groups we've got are fine art painting groups, which I do run one of them, um, but apart from that, we've got a few craft groups, but nothing, nothing like this, so I'm just wondering whether would enjoy there's got to be a lot of people in the area I live in that do modelling this has got to be there's too many people with the ground here for there not to be but we'll see we'll see what happens It doesn't take long once you start. It doesn't take long to uh, to crack through for half a dozen figures. Especially when you're in the Civil War. They're not all as easy as this. Okay, right. Down to the last one. Yeah, so uh, tell me what you've been up to. Let me know what you've been doing, and what you're working on. I'd love to see. 
other people's progress. It's, uh, it helps. It, it, it helps to push each other. Encourages each other. Continue to try and finish what we're doing and gives us the enthusiasm to sort of like wow look at them let's have a go at myself see if I can get up to that standard I can finish more troops you know it was only it was only looking at what some of you guys have produced in the Napoleonics that helped me to get over that barrier of literally not wanting to paint a single another single Napoleonic figure I was only watching you guys and what you'd done to help me push through that to finish the English battalion Right, I'll get back to you in a minute. Let this lot dry first. Okay, welcome back. Okay, dry. The next thing I'm going to do now is work on your shoes. And I'm using Vallejo Saddle Brown for, your, for their shoes. Boots, shoes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'll just slap it on. Being careful, obviously. But, you know. So some of these look like modern day Doc Martin or anything else. Certainly not the uh, type of footwear I've seen. Either uh, in books or museums or even when I was doing reenactment you can have these things sorry <laughs> too, much, too much like modern Doc Martin the Civil War Society uh, prided itself on getting the uniforms Uniforms as close to what you could call uniforms. Period costumes as close as possible. 17th century. Believe you me, I remember a few battles I was involved in in the summer. Standing there, got a heavy shirt on, got a doublet on. Got a buff coat on, and got armour plate on, in the sun. Whoa, did we sweat. A few times, I remember a few of the guys passing it, because of the heat. Crazy. So, how, how some of these guys ever got on? Wearing some of the stuff they had to wear, especially during the June and Napoleonic period. Oh dear, some of those heavy coats. And what I do is, round his feet on the base, I paint a bit of brown as well. So it helps when you come to base in them. Because you've got to try and get in the brown paint. With a different colour brown paint. Get it all over their shoes, boots, footwear, whatever they wear. Yeah, it's just a little thing I do. These ones are a little more closer. I do my boots in brown. 
because brown was the predominant colour in those days. Yes, they did have black. Of course, they had black. But for the average soldier, brown is quite sufficient. throw a huge amount of money at the soldier because basically basic necessities what they needed at the end of the day they're only classed as gun fodder Like any other period of history, those generals didn't care very much for the soldiery. They were just pawns in a battle. First World War was a prime example of that. Throwing men over the top of the trenches, knowing they were going to be mowed down by heavy machine gun fire. And did they care? No. If you didn't move, you were shot on the spot. Classed as a deserter. Coward. I'd like to have seen some of those generals and field marshals that were back at their headquarters looking out there and doing the same. But they certainly wouldn't have done. They didn't care. Two hoots. Okay. Well, I'm just going to finish painting the rest of these boots and I'll get back to you soon. All right. Okay, welcome back. Uh, right, now we're going to be doing the shirt. And for that, I use ivory. So, Gonna worry about this is this is loose enough. Um, for this one, I pull out my insane army painter detail brush. Because uh, in that finer point, I can get in under the hair. That's it. Okay, you only need a little bit on the end of your brush. Don't overload your brush. It only destroys them at the end of the day. That's got it right. <laughs> can you see it? I think you can see it, can you? That's his shirt. Right now, uh, come down to do the ribbons at the bottom of his breeches. Some of these I'll do all these various colours some I'll do blue some I'll do white 
whatever color I've got going at that particular time. Making sure they didn't. Uh, This you would win. Pacific regimental colours. Oh, maybe they did. And when we was doing reenactment, it was just whatever ribbon we got our hands on. To put in the bottom of the, the riches. Different colours. Okay. So just like that. All right. But, but get back to you when I've done all the rest. Okay. Right, next we're going to tattle his hair. For that I'm going to use a couple in black, a couple in chocolate brown and a couple in a light grey. Why not? So we'll do the first two in black. And this is simple, it's just putting on the black, painting on the black of the hair, that's all. Take the normal poor old humble airfix brush and again making sure I don't go all the way over the top because I need an area to glue his bonnet down so leaving the top and then see just to make his hair not complicated this you can almost say this is painted by numbers Be careful. Make sure your paint is ruddy but not over ruddy. So I don't want it running down onto his shirt. The hard thing is just keep your eye on that pipe again. Uh, <coughs> just like that. And this chap's got a moustache. So I'm going to attempt just to like that. Okay. You see that? So, do all the rest like that in the different hair colours that you want. Okay, the next part is to do the pikes, and those are done in mahogany brown. Well, for me anyway. You do whatever brown you want to do them in, obviously. The plastic ones will have the metal strapping that comes down the sides from the pike head. Go round that. If you're using the metal ones like me, because I'm sick and tired of breaking the plastic ones, keep catching them, and eventually they'll bend over so much, but eventually they just snap. Uh, on. 
changing all my plastic pipes to metal ones. Okay, yeah, you run the risk of stabbing yourself. But at least I know that the hit them too hard, all that's going to happen is the pipe's going to break away from its, its glue point so I just have to glue it back on once you snap these plastic pipes they're not very easy to join back together yeah you can pin them Rather just replace the lot with metal ones. It's easier. Just be a little careful as you go down. Put his hand past his doublet. Check that you've got it off. Okay, uh, just like that. Get back to you when I've done the rest. Okay, the last job we've got to do is the bonnets, um, and that's done with medium blue. So we just take our bonnets. Oh, yes, while I was offline. Um, I also just went and done the the gun metal on the sword hilt and just on the the end of the pikes and just where some of them have got them on the the, the, the sword strap the, the bottle that's all I haven't done buttons or anything yet it's too early for that so now just take some of the blue and just paint paint the bonnet all over. You can see why I didn't stick the bonnet down onto the, uh, the figure's head before painting it because it is really blue. I don't want all that blue over the face. So just it's only on cocktail sticks with a little bit of super glue just inside. We will snap off later everything. Not a problem. You'll find some of them have got this little thistle at the front. Um, just if you want to just paint that what basically a heather colour, a purple colour or reddish colour, brownish colour, it's up to you. I normally do mine to say in a um, purple type colour. Uh, with that, once we've done that, the next step will be going over with some shade and then highlighting. So I'll leave that for another video because this is already over 30 minutes. I've got to learn how to how to do each step and then uh, pause the video properly. So thanks for joining me. Have a nice day. Stay safe. God bless. See you all soon. Bye.